All right, so now that we have our interface um, all set, now we, we're gonna move to uh, JavaScript. And the first thing we wanna do is we wanna create a database using um, HTML5 web storage. And we can actually run SQL uh, on the database. It's basically a local database that's stored in your browser. All right, so go ahead and open up might as well open up all the files we have, the index. Um, actually, the CSS we don't need. That's, that's pretty much complete. Uh, so just the index and then the script.js file. All right, so the first thing we're going to do here is uh, we're going to set a variable called db. And we're going to start out with it as null. And then what we want to do is um, open up a database using the web storage API. All right, so I'm going to put an if statement here, an if else, and we're going to say if window dot, uh, if window dot open database, all right, so we're checking for um, web storage capability in the browser, all right, so if window dot open database, then we're going to set that db variable equal to open database and that'll be the the main uh, object that we'll use for database queries and inside of the open database function uh, it takes four parameters all right so the first parameter is going to be the database name okay so we're going to call this note test and the second parameter is the version okay we'll say 1.0 and the third parameter is basically just like a human friendly name. Um, we'll just call it Sticky's database. And then finally, we want the estimated size uh, of the database. And of course, it's just an estimate. You, you don't know exactly how big it'll be, but I'm just gonna put in uh, 10 megabytes. And this is actually in bytes, so we wanna say, um, one, two, three, one, two, three. All right, so that should be 10 megabytes. All right, um, now we're just gonna do a check to make sure that DB gets set. So we'll say if not DB, if not DB, then we're just gonna send an alert. Okay, so basically we'll just say field to open database. All right, so in this um, else block, we're just gonna set an alert as well. So alert, and this one, um, we'll just write the same thing, failed to open database all right and actually with this one let's say fail to open database um, make sure your browser supports um, let's say HTML5 web storage okay so let's save that all right, now let's go ahead and um, reload the index page. And I'm gonna press F12 for Chrome tools. And if you click on the resources tab and we look over here to the left, you can see we have um, an option to view the web SQL. So if we click the arrow, you can see our database note test is there. Now there's nothing in there. We haven't created any kind of columns or tables or anything like that, uh, but the database is there. All right, and it'll stay there even if, let's go ahead and exit out and go back in and check it out again. Go to resources, web SQL, and it's still there. All right, so if you're using Chrome and you exit out and go back in and you don't see this, then you need to just change your content settings. And to do that, you wanna just go to settings, uh, show advanced settings, content settings and uh, if, if it's disappearing on you then you probably have one of these checked 
all right you want to make sure that you allow local data to be set all right um, this option is sometimes selected to keep it until the browser closes all right so I mean if that's how you want this to work then that's fine but if you want it to stay there even after the browser closes you want to make sure you have this one checked all right so now we need to create a note object all right or create the function that creates the note object and this is going to be called a constructor a constructor function and basically all that is is it's a function that will run when you create a new note object or when you instantiate the object okay so we're going to say function note all right and since this is a is an, an object constructor we the convention is to use um, capitals uh, at the beginning of the function name all right so the first thing we're going to do is create a variable called self all right and we're going to equal this to this so what this means is that whenever we use this self variable we're referring to the note object okay we're, we're referring to itself and uh, if you have any experience in other programming languages then um, this shouldn't be too hard to understand next we're going to create a variable called note and we're going to set that to document dot create element all right so a note is going to create an element and it's we're going to create a div tag all right so we want to say div all right now we want to take that variable note and we're going to say note dot class name is equal to note. All right, so every note that's created, we want to create a div with the class of note. And what we want to do is create a few event listeners. All right, so JavaScript events are click, uh, load, mouse down, mouse over, things like that. All right, so we're going to say note dot add event listener all right and the event that we want to listen for is the mouse down all right so mouse down and then the second parameter is going to be a function and this function um, can take an event parameter so we'll call that e and uh, let's we're going to return uh, we're going to return self dot on mouse down all right now this on mouse down is going to be a function that we create so it doesn't exist yet okay so return uh, on mouse down and actually yeah that's good all right and then the next parameter all right so we have the the event the function all right so after the function we're going to create uh, another parameter and we're going to pass in false and the false basically is a use capture um, which indicates that the user wants to initiate capture and we don't really have to worry about that uh, we're just going to say false all right so next uh, we want to add another event listener so we're going to say note dot add event listener all right so in here this is going to be a click okay so click and same thing second parameter is going to be a function pass in the event all right, and in this one, um, we're going to return. We're going to return self dot um, on note click. Okay, on note click. Fix that L. And then we're also going to pass in false. Should probably separate these a little bit make it easier to read 
and actually we don't need to pass in the event parameter here all right so now we want to uh, the note variable we want that to I'm sorry we want this note equals note all right so this keyword again it it refers to the uh, the object and the object is uh, this function creates the object okay so it's just a property of the object all right so now we want to move to the close button all right we're going to stay in this function and create a variable called close um, and we're going to set that we're going to create another element so document dot create element and the element we want to create is a div all right and then we'll say close dot class name and we're going to set that to close button all right so the close button will have a class called close button and same thing we're going to add an event listener i'm just going to copy this one all right so we're going to change this note to close and the event is going to be a click all right so click and we will pass in the event parameter we're going to return self dot close all right and that's good we want false for the capture all right and then we just want to uh, say note dot pen child so we're going to add this um, actually close all right so we're going to add that to the note as a child div. So basically we're, we're constructing the actual uh, physical note in this function. All right, so we're not done yet. Now we wanna create uh, a variable called edit and set that, we're gonna create another div. So create element. And we're going to say edit.className. And the class name is going to be edit. And then edit, we're going to set an attribute. So attribute. All right. And then the attribute we're going to set is an HTML5 attribute called content editable. Okay, content uh, editable, and that basically just turns it into a uh, into an input field so that we can actually edit it. Now, just giving that attribute to an to a element doesn't make it so we can save it or do anything with it. It basically just has the browser turn it into a uh, an input field so that we can add something. We'll have to use JavaScript to actually make it do anything. All right. And we're going to say we're going to set the next parameter to false because it doesn't have a value. And then we want to add an event listener. So I'm going to copy this. Actually, you know what? I want to put some of these together. The note. Well, they can all go together. And then the close. Just make it a little more readable, I guess. Uh, actually, we'll put this there. All right, so we have our note, close, edit. Okay, so the next thing we want to do uh, with edit is add the event listener. So I'm going to change this to edit. Okay, and the listener that we want is the key up. Okay, the event is key up. So key up. And the function, we don't need to pass that in. And it's going to return 
uh, it's going to return self dot on key up, which is a function that we haven't created yet. Okay, and then we're going to say same thing here. We're going to append child to the note object or variable, and this is just going to be edit. Okay, and then finally for edit, we're going to say this dot edit field um, edit field equals edit. All right. Now for the timestamp variable ts for timestamp is we're going to set an element, create an element, um, document dot create element, which again will be a div. All right, and class dot class name. Um, Class name will be timestamp. Okay, and then our event listener. TS. And the event's going to be the mouse down event. Okay, and we want to run a function, and we're just going to return the on most down function that we'll create. Okay, so that's good. We're going to also append to note. And we're going to say this dot last modified uh, is going to be equal to TS. All right, and we're going to do the same thing. We're going to append. Actually, we're going to uh, say document dot body dot append child. So we're going to add to the body, okay, the body tag, which is basically the entire page, and we're just going to add a note, and then we're just going to return itself return this and that looks good that's our object it has uh, a few different um, properties here note close edit uh, timestamp so whenever we create a new note this will all run now what we're going to do is create a prototype for the note object and basically prototype uh, is it's basically an extension of the note object and that's where we're going to define all these functions that we specified, like this on key up, on mouse down. Um, all these functions can be specified within the prototype. All right, so underneath our note object, all right, we're going to say note dot prototype. And then in these curly braces will be uh, all our functions and properties and whatever we need uh, to extend this note object. The first few methods or functions that we're going to create are called getter and setter methods. So basically we're going to make it so that we can access the internal data of the note object um, through these methods. All right, so the first one we'll create is going to be get ID. All right, so we're going to say if if not, and we're going to say underscore ID in this, and I'll explain this in a second. This dot ID. I'm sorry. This dot underscore ID equals zero and then return this dot underscore ID. Basically where we want to get the ID of the note and we're saying if uh, if there is no ID then we're going to set this dot ID to zero and then we're simply returning the ID. 
So basically this will return either the ID or zero. Now the next method is going to set the ID. Whoop. All right, so we'll say uh, set ID and I'm going to pass in a variable of X. And this is very simple. We're just going to say uh, this dot ID is equal to X, X being whatever we pass in. All right. All right, so next we're going to get the text. Basically, the text is whatever is in the note. So we'll say get text. All right, and we're just going to return uh, whatever's typed. And you remember we added this, um, where is it? We set this attribute uh, for edit. We set the attribute content editable which gives us an input field uh, when we click on it, okay? So we're gonna type in that input field, and then this is where we're going to set it, all right? So whatever we put in there is gonna be, we're gonna get it, okay? So we're gonna say, return this, which is the note object, dot edit field, which we specified above, dot inner HTML, uh, well, yeah, in our HTML. So whatever's in that input box will be returned with this method. Okay, and just like with the ID, we'll have a set. We'll say set text and we'll pass in a variable which will be the text. And then we're simply going to say this dot this dot edit field dot inner HTML is equal to X okay so whatever we put in is going to be assigned all right so next is the timestamp so we'll say get timestamp and this will basically be just like the ID when we get the ID so I'm just gonna copy that and just change ID to timestamp this timestamp and then return um, timestamp so it's gonna get it if there is no timestamp then it'll be zero alright and same thing we want to set the timestamp alright and we're gonna pass in X and we're just going to say uh, this dot timestamp. Uh, actually, we want to put this in an if statement. So if this dot timestamp is equal to whatever is put in, then return. All right, so here we're going to say this dot um, timestamp equals X all right so this is just saying if whatever's passed in is that is equal to the timestamp then we're just going to return from this function all right so it'll stop there uh, if not then we're going to say this dot timestamp equals X and we're going to use the date function so variable date equals new date and here we're going to say um, date dot set time and then inside of the set time method we're going to pass in parse float um, x and this parse float function, what it does is it takes a string and returns a floating point number, all right, for the timestamp. All right, and then we want to set this dot last modified um, dot text content is going to be equal to 
modified string and then date and this um, last modified property comes from up here uh, when we define the timestamp you can see we have this dot last modified all right and then this modified string is going to be a function that we're going to create all right so it'll make more sense then all right so the next thing that we want to get in set are, are the positions of the notes all right so that we have the position so that when we close the browser we come back we we want them in the same place so we're going to make we're going to create these get and set functions all right so the first one will be get left so basically we want to get the left position uh, and that's going to return this dot note dot style dot left all right so that I get the left position um, to set it all right so to set it we want to pass in the position so X and we'll say this dot note um, dot style dot left is going to be equal to X all right uh, actually we should be putting a comma after each method here forgot about that all right so that sets the left um, now we want to do the top all right because we're going from the left and the top that's how we're position positioning these um, notes so actually I'm just going to copy this and change these to top all right so that's the positioning next we want the z index all right because we want uh I don't have the example here but we want the notes to be able to go over the other notes so when we when we when we're dragging a note it should go over the other ones and that's done with uh, a Z index all right so we're gonna say get actually let's just copy this all right so Z index these all essentially do the same thing. They either get something or they set something. All right, so for, actually, this shouldn't be X. We want Z index. Um, and then this note style, Z index. Okay, and then set Z index. And same thing we're just going to change this all right so that's the z index all right so those are the get and set methods for the note object um, this video is getting kind of long so i'm going to stop here and then in the next video we'll move on to creating our methods um, like this on mouse down the close method things like that all right so we'll do that next